This is going to be a cheese filled crumb coffee cake. Now who doesn't like coffee cake? They come in all sizes, shapes, flavors. There's thousands of recipes for coffee cakes. This is going to be like one of those coffee cakes, the famous brand that we won't mention, that you buy in the supermarket that's got the cheese filling and the nice crumbs on top. Except this one is made in your own home. So what I've started with is I have six tablespoons of butter and three quarters of a cup of milk, which I put in the microwave for about a minute and a half to melt the butter. And I just let it cool a little bit. And I'm going to put that in my mixer bowl and let it sit here for a few minutes and cool down even more. So I'll put that aside. And now I'm gonna proof my yeast. I've got my yeast, which I buy in bulk. And I'm going to have one and a half teaspoons of yeast and one quarter cup of warm water, about 110 degrees. And just mix that up. And now I'm going to let both of these sit on the counter for about five minutes. So this gets a little more bubbly and this cools down a little bit more. And then we can proceed with the recipe. In about five minutes, and now we're going to add our rest of our ingredients. I've got a half a cup of regular white sugar, half a tablespoon of salt, and I use kosher salt, two eggs, and our yeast mixture. Okay. Now we're going to start by mixing that on and I'm going to use the dough hook because we're going to be adding flour. Just mix that for a minute or so. Now I'm going to start adding the flour. I have four and a half cups of all-purpose flour. There's nothing else in here, no baking powder or anything like that because we're using yeast. And now I'm gonna start it slow so I don't get it all over the place. And I'll also have a bowl ready that I will spray with cooking spray, make it nice and greased that over there. Now if you wanted to make this by hand without a mixer you could do this and you could be doing this part with a wooden spoon and just keep beating. Why you'd want to do that I have no idea but some people don't have one of these mixers. And if you do that then what you're going to have to do is take this dough, put it on a floured surface and knead it for about five to ten minutes because you're not going to get the help of the mixer. take this off for one second. I'm going to scrape down the sides. And let it mix again. Alright, add a little bit more flour. that for a couple of minutes. Okay. If you've noticed with this mixer, I sometimes lift it up a little bit because the uh, uh, dough hook doesn't get all the way down to the bottom and this way it does. So now I'm gonna just take this off and make it easier for me to add the rest of my flour. All in. And 
Now I'm going to let it mix on here for about three or four minutes after it's blended, just to give it a little bit of kneading. That's mixed pretty well. If you want to, you can knead this on the board if you want to, but you don't really have to for this dough. So I'm just gonna scrape it off. It's sticky, but it's not really sticking to my fingers. So you know it's all incorporated. Well, I should take that back, shouldn't I? <laughs> It is sticking my sticking to my fingers somewhat, but not a lot. Okay, and now we bring over our greased bowl. Get this dough out of here. Plop. And just press it down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover this with plastic wrap and put it somewhere in my kitchen where it's warm. And I'm going to let it sit there for about an hour and a half until it doubles in bulk. While the dough is rising, I'm going to make the cheese filling for the coffee cake. So I've got an eight ounce softened cream cheese. Everything gets dumped in. One egg, third of a cup of flour, half a cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of lemon juice, which I squeezed myself, half a teaspoon of vanilla, which I made myself, and we're just gonna mix these up until they're nice and smooth. filling. I'm just going to put it in another bowl and put it off to the side and I will then make the streusel that goes on top of the coffee cake and then by that time the dough should be ready to be rolled out and shaped into our coffee cake. So let's just put this in here. Put that aside and I'll make the streusel next. Now we'll make the crumbs for the coffee cake on top, the streusel. So in here I have three quarters of a cup of flour, one third cup of sugar, and half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And to that I'm going to add four tablespoons of very soft butter. And this is really just going to be mixed to quickly combine in spurts. I don't want it to become a paste. I want it to stay lumpy. And that's it. Now I'm going to clean all this up and I'm going to go get the dough and to bring it back we're going to put this coffee cake together. Here's the dough all risen and from this amount of dough we're going to make two coffee cakes. So first of all I'm going to put a little flour here because I'm going to turn this out and I don't want it to stick on it. There we go. And we're going to divide it in half just eyeball it. Okay, and I'm going to leave one under here so it doesn't get any crust on it. Now, what you need is a sheet pan. This is a half sheet pan, and I'm using Silpat because I'm going to form the coffee cake on the Silpat, and then later I can lift it up and put it on the pan. You can also do this with a piece of parchment paper if you don't have Silpat, but it's not going to um, be as easy to pick up. 
So just bear that in mind. If you have a cookie sheet without sides, then you can do it right on this because your rolling pin won't have the sides to deal with. So we're gonna put a little flour in here. Get my rolling pin. And you want to roll the dough to the size of your mat. Sideways. I need to cut off a piece and make a little patch there. All right, that's pretty close. All right, let's try to get it a little bit more over here. These sides are important because they're going to be what covers up the center. I'll put that in there, a little patchwork. Okay, now remember our cheese mixture. I'm going to take approximately half of it and put it right down the center. And then just spread it out evenly. You want to keep it in the center. And don't bring it to the ends. You leave a flap and the sides open. Now, I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to start making tabs approximately an inch wide, all the way down the side. Turn it around and you want to make the tabs on this side even with the ones on that side. Again, approximately, you're eyeballing this. Now, with the two bottom tabs, you take out this piece on both sides, leaving that center. Same thing with the top. And now, you fold over this flap and this one. And now starting with the top, one over, sort of at an angle, and over, and you just keep going down the coffee cake. And give it a little press. Not, not a lot, because you don't want the cheese to come flying out. Okay, there's our coffee cake. And then our streusel. I'm gonna take half of that and just put it on top. Just give it a little press in. Okay, get your pan, lift this up. Got it there. Now what I'm going to do is cover it with a tea towel and I'm gonna leave it at room temperature for 30 minutes to uh, puff up, at least 30 minutes. You can make it go 45 to an hour if you want to. So now while this one's rising, I'm gonna go work on the second one. Here are our cheese filled crumb cakes after they've been sitting for about 45 minutes. You can see they're just starting to get nice and puffy around the edges. My oven is at 375. I'm going to put these in for 25 to 30 minutes until they get nicely golden brown. And then after they cool down, I'll show you how to finish them off. So to the oven. Here are our crumb cakes out of the oven. They've been cooling for about 20 minutes. They just have one more finishing touch. And this, you really have to do this part. It really adds a lot, not only to the flavor, but the looks. And that's a dusting of confectioner's sugar. 
over the top. And these, my friends, are ready to eat. I hope you enjoy them. Oh,